Um, I come to you with a message of hope. It's a hope born of 200 years of struggle. Those who have not studied American history sometimes get the idea that democracy and human rights, to the extent they exist in the United States, were a gift from on high. And by on high, I don't mean uh, uh, the Lord or Allah. I mean the gift from our rulers. That's not true. The rulers intended for there not to be a Bill of Rights. The reason we have a Bill of Rights is because ordinary people oppose the centralization of power that the founders of this nation were engaged in. They fought for the Bill of Rights. After the Bill of Rights was enacted, people who supported the French were rounded up, including people in Congress and locked up. And people who opposed the, uh, uh, and they were deported because they were French. They were close to war with France at that time. The reason Thomas Jefferson was elected in a huge landslide in 1800 was because the American people said, that is not our country. And that message, that history, that culture of resistance to abuse of authority is the one thing, the only thing, that this nation has been able to depend on to make certain that this powerful thing that the American people have become part of has been controlled. It happened in the 1800s. It happened in the struggle against slavery. It happened to get women the vote. It happened to uh, fight the uh, World War II. My wife is Japanese, you know, she was in people put in camps. And after that, if you were a communist, if you thought wrong, you were attacked. It's not just Muslims who are involved in this struggle. Today, Muslims are the canaries in the coal mine. This is a struggle for all of the American people. We know from Germany that Pastor Niebuhr said of Germany, first they came to the communists. I wasn't a communist, so I didn't speak out. And then they came for the Jews. I wasn't a Jew, so I didn't speak out. And then they came for the Catholics, and I wasn't a Catholic, and I didn't speak out. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak. That is what is facing our country and the American people today. But because the United States is now a worldwide empire, that by its performance, it teaches other nations how to, forgot how to behave. When a nation like this says there is no international law that restrains its power, that there is no constitution that restrains its power, that there is no law that can make certain that when people are arrested, they are treated according to rules. When you have a situation where Guantanamo is not only created in Cuba, but many Guantanamos are created all over the United States by manipulation of the legal system to make it something that we can't even recognize. Samuel Arian. Samuel Arian was arrested in 2003. John Ashcroft, in a press conference in Moscow, said this is the biggest financier for, for uh, terrorists in the Middle East in the whole hemisphere. He was put in segregation 24-7, just like Fahad, for a year and a half. I have another client, actually, I have another client back in Minnesota. He's been in segregation for over four years. He's been held pretrial longer than any other pretrial detainee in history. It'll be six years before he even sees a trial, if he sees one then. The rules don't apply. And it's because there's this huge threat. It's this huge threat that means that we need to change the rules. It's a quote I want to give you. Um, famous guy said, you know, ordinary people don't want war. It's not up to them. It's up to the leaders. All you have to do is tell them there's a threat. Accuse the pacifists of being disloyal, and you can do anything you want. It's always been that way. That was Herman Goring in the 1946 Nuremberg Tribunals explaining the philosophies how the Nazis seized up. And it's that use of a threat of the other 
of the strange thing that we have to protect ourselves from that's being used here today. And it's about Muslims. But at the same time, they're attacking Muslims, they're supporting the Saudis and the Wahhabis. Hmm. What could that mean? The reality is America has gone from being a democratic republic to an empire. It now has material interests all over the world. It's now in a state of collapse. There's never been an empire in history with a democratic republic at its core that survived the collapse with that democratic republic in place. This is an attack on the entire structure of the country that has gotten us to this place because the country is no longer a democratic republic. It is an empire, no matter who we like. So the question is, what can we do about it? And this is where the message of hope comes in. Samuel Aaron's case, he was taken to trial after the conditions that you know about. And for six months, the government presented evidence after witness, after witness, after witness, after bombing victim in Palestine, after Mossad agent, after, 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 after. And there had been 10 years of anti-Muslim, anti-Sami, anti-Palestinian propaganda in Tampa. And the Tampa jury was here in this case. And after those six months, the defense lawyers had a strategy. Here's what it was. No evidence. No witnesses. Looking straight in the eye of those 12 American people and saying everything that Dr. Aaron did was protected by our Constitution. And if you're an American and you believe in your own Constitution, you have to find him not guilty. And they did. It was a great day for the Constitution. Ordinary people who didn't know us and said, this is just not right. And it's that spirit that exists within the American people that if we can tap, we can do something with it. We can change the direction of the country, but it's going to be a huge struggle because even after Dr. Al Aaron was acquitted in the December of 2005, he's still in prison. He's in a hunger strike today and in danger of being incarcerated indefinitely because the federal government is not obeying the law. I'm not going to get into the details. I've heard about that. You can see it on the Common Good Dreams website if you want to look it up. But we're continuing that fight. And he will be released. But they have been plans for him life imprisonment. They're not going to get that. And they've been able to manipulate the system so far that it's now becoming even embarrassing to them. And if there is a future, not just for Muslims in America, but a future for democracy in America, a future for human rights in America, it's the entire American people that will have to stand up and say no. Not to protect the Muslims, but to protect all of us. Because if the United States becomes the sort of lawless nation that we've seen developed in other countries at other times, the world will be faced with, a, with the most powerful threat to the existence of the people of the world that the world has ever faced. And this is not just a domestic struggle. Things are changing in Pakistan. People in Iraq are refusing to accept the dictates of the empire. People in Africa are refusing to. People in South America are refusing. And increasingly, people in the United States are too. And I'm deeply sorry that Muslims are in the position of being targeted during this grasping extension of power that we're seeing in front of us because Muslims are in the areas of the world. But you're not alone. This is something the American people have fought back before. My wife's parents are no longer in the camps. There was an apology eventually. It took a long time. But I guarantee you, that if there is going to be a future for democracy and human rights in the United States, it's going to depend on how well we as a people respond to what's going on to Muslim people today. And Muslim people recognize that the struggle they have is a worldwide struggle to make certain that imperialism, that it's certain that this powerful nation does not get out of control, and we owe it not only to ourselves, but to the people of the world and our children. Thanks.